I'm getting ready for the live show we're going to do on Monday. It's all about Tesla coils. So I spent some time this week winding some Tesla coils. Here's some of them that I have for testing. The one on the far left is a 2 inch PVC pipe. It's a 28 gauge wire and it's about 14 inches of wound uh, wire and it's perfect for my gravity flyer. I'll explain that in a little bit. The one next to it is 28 gauge as well. It's at 310 I believe on the kilohertz is where it resonates. That's for my ZVS only. The next one is for my Slayer Exciter circuit and it's only 11 inches at 28 gauge wire and then the one on the far right is a 4 inch PVC pipe 11 inches of wound wire and that one's at 32 gauge and that one resonates around 310 kilohertz so that's for my ZVS as well so we got four cool coils all of them do different things so let's take a look at each one and what they do the first one we're going to look at is my 11 inch coil this is my Slayer Exciter coil it uses one transistor and it's absolutely amazing 40 volts continuously all day long does not heat up does not mess around at all continuously lights up the light bulb and it goes about I want to say two and a half feet and then if you get it up to 60 volts it immediately starts heating up the transistor but it'll get you out to three feet or so so it's absolutely an amazing circuit. It works all day long at 40 volts and I like this one a lot. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you the circuit real quick uh, on the diagram and then we'll go on to the next one. Okay, here we go. Here's our breakdown of how this works. I'll walk you through it so we understand it. First of all, here is the part number right here 2SA1962 okay it is max 230 volts 15 amps so we got a pretty good one here okay I ran it at 40 volts and 8 amps and that's for 45 minutes without it breaking down so we're doing good there now here's a little breakdown on this here's our power source all we got to do on our DC power source, let's write that on there, DC, a negative, goes right over here to a 47K ohm resistor, okay, that same resistor goes off, goes to the bottom of the number one coil, and then the resistor itself connects right over here, now this MOSFET is right here with the writing on it, so it would be two SA1962 right there so as you see the writing on it this is the exact way that it connects so you see that'll go right over here to the top of the number one coil let's go ahead and take a look here this pin here it also connects the resistor but it goes before the resistor right here goes to the bottom of the main coil which is the number two coil so that big coil right there that goes to the bottom of it and that's this end here now the last end of it here will go here to our positive right here on our DC power source now you can use whatever you want as your power source I just use the simple power source here The next coil we're going to take a look at is for my gravity flyer. Now this coil is a little bit different. It runs on a ZVS driver so it has to be anywhere from 300 to 350 kilohertz is where it normally runs at on the uh, ZVS driver. So one of the greatest things about this coil is when you add the gravity flyer as capacitance to the coil it will actually get right in the correct spot around 340 I believe it is kilohertz on this coil I went ahead and looked at it earlier and I just want to show that to you now right now I'm checking out the capacitance with my gravity flyer connected to my Tesla coil 340 kilohertz is where I'm at now as I drop this a little bit 
right about there, kind of in this area, 200 to 220, somewhere in that area is where I'd get feedback. We bring it back up. This right here is about where I want to be on my resonance now. So again, if I have it here, I can go back to here. And this is where I get feedback and then automatically jump back to here. So that's perfect. That's what this coil right here that I built a little while back. It's the 2 inch coil with uh, 28 gauge wiring. Now you'll see the wire right here on top of my coil. It's connected right here. Now that goes down and around. It's just connected right here to my gravity flyer. So my gravity flyer adds capacitance to this coil. So let's see what happens. If I can get that off of there. There we go. Now, I just unhooked it. Now I'm at the same frequency, but it's no good no more. No, nope. not what we want. This is where this Tesla coil operates without the gravity flyer on it. So 694. Wow, that's a lot of capacitance for that gravity flyer right there. We're looking in the 360, so 400, uh, somewhere around there. So three, yeah. No, it's 350. About 350 is what we're looking at right there. So 350 kilohertz is what that gravity flyer eats right there. That's crazy. So we know where resonance is on this coil, but the gravity flyer adds so much to it. I thought it was important that everybody be able to see that. These last two coils, I hope to have them done before the Monday show. Both of them are already built, they're already sprayed, they're ready to go for testing tomorrow. They just need to dry. So, they both are sitting right in the range for my ZVS Tesla coil circuit. And that's anywhere between 300 and 360 kilohertz is right around the right frequency we want to get for that ZVS. These two fall perfectly into it. But before I get to those and I show you the frequencies on them, I wanted to show you something that happened while I was winding one of them. So let me show it to you and I'll tell you what happened. Did you guys catch that sound? It did it twice. What it actually is, is a spool of wire. It's 28 gauge wire. And what's going on is it's picking up resonance in that spool of wire when I turn this whole thing. So let's hear it one more time and I'll tell you exactly what happened. So here's what's actually going on. As I'm spinning the number two coil, I'm building up charge in it. It's a negative charge that's building up inside of the PVC pipe itself. Now, it doesn't transfer over to the coil because we're not in a state of energy where it can transfer yet. This is simply charge on the pipe. Now, as I walk away and I come back, I'm going to add heat to the whole system. I was there before, but the heat wasn't taking hold because I was building charge. Now, I'm going to 
add heat to this and in that moment that I do this and I spin it again what's going to happen is the negative charge is going to turn into potential but it's also going to add heat which is going to add magnetism to it so as soon as I do that it flips from the amount of charge over to magnetism inside of that spool of wire right there and it causes it to resonate and you hear it rumble and you can actually see the little piece of metal sitting there next to it the rod it'll start shaking on the table and man this thing shook the table pretty good so that's what we got going on here I actually caught the moment where we turn potential into energy and it shows up in resonance in that spool of wire absolutely amazing I cannot believe that I caught it and it's just an honest to God true cool thing in life to see this is the number two coil you saw me winding in the video it resonates at 340 kilohertz and it's 21 inches in length 4 inches in diameter and this thing right here uh, Sean and I were just looking at the Java for the Tesla coil and we're trying to figure out what was what which way does it work how you know how do we get this thing to work for us so we decided 21 inches and that was our height number two our height number one was two inches so you have to leave an inch at the bottom and an inch at the top to calculate this program it was 1450 turns at 28 gauge wire so we got this thing to work now we estimated it would be right around 300 kilohertz, 301, 302, somewhere in there. And I added a little bit extra on the coil, probably about a half inch to an inch of extra winding on the coil. So it came out to 340, but that's okay. The ZVS circuit works in that parameter. So we're going to be okay on this. Now, if I wanted to get it back down to 300, I'd just take you know, about a half inch with a winding off and we'll be, we'd be right around 300 kilohertz on the winding. This one right here is the smaller of the four inch pipes that we used. And this one was 32 gauge at 11 inches of winding. And it came out to about 320 kilohertz. Again, we're aiming for 300, 320, 340 is okay. But 320 is about where this thing came out at. And we know it's going to be a great coil for the ZVS. Now let's go ahead and we'll just take a look at the video here. And I'll show you when we go in and out of resonance on this thing. This right here is the number two coil that I use for my Slayer Exciter circuit. Now it resonates right around 920 kilohertz. So the problem with this and running it in a ZVS circuit here is the number one coil of a ZVS circuit when you hook it up goes anywhere from 400 kilohertz at the very bottom coil all the way up to 200 and something kilohertz on the very top of the coil on probably what five six windings on this thing so your sweet spots right around 300 kilohertz it's just the way the circuits built and you're gonna have to build your number two coil around it that's why you see the previous two coils we were trying to use something that's right around 300 kilohertz so I think we accomplished that in there so we shouldn't have a problem be having any problems with the ZVS running this thing now so let me show you some of the pains I went through in this coil and you can judge for yourself because this is painful for me to watch. We're at 30 volts. Right now we do have light up so probably shouldn't go over the top like that. We do have a circuit that's working. We're up right now at 40. For those of you who have built testicles before, you could probably tell me right now what's wrong. 
And it'd be the sound, wouldn't it? The humming sound that you're hearing. Why are you hearing it? Well, it's because I'm not in resonance with my Tesla coil. Well, it's on the bare edge of it, I guess, but it's not anywhere close to where it should be. So what's happened? You're getting feedback into your number one coil. It's just not resonating, not the way it needs to. So you're going to get a hum sound that comes out of your number one coil. That should never be there. That is a big no-no in this building of this Tesla coil. I'm surprised I didn't have a worse result or blow something out because of this. But that's one of the pitfalls you're going to run into when you start building things like this. I'm probably in the wrong residence right there. And I'm starting to fire right now. Basically just some uh, tubing on there. Doesn't like that. Alright, well first test. Do we have some lighting? Yeah, we do. Is it in residence? No. So let's go to the second one. So what was the second giveaway that we're totally wrong? Well, the wire that we hooked in with the clip started on fire. Later on in the testing you're going to find that it's going to start melting. That's a big hint that you're not oscillating properly. Test number two and we just moved it up a little bit. Let's see if that helped. We get our light out. Go up to about 30. We have light up. Right now close to 40 and it looks worse. That's starting to look better. We are now at 42. Moved it up. We're at 46. And we're still smoking on that wire. Well, it's going to have to last. Alright, we're going to change this down one on the next one. And we're going to see if it works even better. Alright, we're in test three. We are now only on the second coil right here. That's connected. We are at 40. Okay, and we got a lot more smoke. I'm going to have to take care of that before I could probably go any further. Oh, how fun it is. Apparently, I'm just hard-headed. The thing is smoking. It's not supposed to smoke. It's buzzing. It's telling me, hey, genius, you are completely out of resonance. Do not continue. Did I listen? No! Not in one bit did I listen. Now, what should I have done? Stopped immediately, go back to the original video that I found it on, and let's look at it again. They obviously did something that I didn't. What did I not do? I did not check my number two coil. I did not find the resonance frequency of that coil, and because I failed in that area, I failed in the whole process. Okay, here we go. Test number three. I basically changed my number one coil here. I got it closer. And I changed the wire. So, hopefully now it won't start on fire and take up all the heat. And maybe we can get something going here. Alright, we'll give it a try. We're at 55, and we're just, that thing's burning red hot. Well, that's not going to work either. What's going on is this piece right here, it clips on, it's just getting red hot. And it's taking up all the heat and all the energy from it. So, 
we may have to put in a second uh, second capacitor here. Yeah, that's it, genius. Just add another capacitor. No matter if you're completely out of resonance or close to it. Nope, let's just add another capacitor. Apparently, you're not learning your lesson well enough. If I could reach through my TV right now and tap my on the shoulder and tell this genius, hey, this is what's going on. It's time to change it because you're completely in the wrong. Set the resonance frequency to the number two coil. Then set your number one coil to that frequency. You must oscillate at a very low amount of power before you try to amp it up with more power. So, like I said, I didn't learn right away. I didn't, wasn't able to talk to my, you know, past self and give him some advice because I'd had some good advice for him, but apparently I just didn't get it. All right, test four. I simply just put two of them in there this time. We'll see if we can't get that switching speed up a little bit. I'm just getting way too much heat, not enough uh, fast switching. So we'll see. Here we are, we're at 40. Fifty-five, and we're dead in the water again. Oh, okay. Well, I need to get a much bigger wire. Apparently, this is not working this way. All right, here we go with test number four. See if it gets any better. Fifty-five. It's better there. Not smoking now. I don't know if that's fixed for good or just a little bit. I think I need to uh, stop and look at it. And I don't think I have my resonance point correct in getting this uh, to hit it the right uh, frequency matchup. So. All right, we're going to have to do some other testing. You know, when you listen back to yourself and you see what you're doing and you hear yourself, you're lighting this thing up where it's burning, right? And you're telling yourself every time, hey, it's out of resonance. But then you continue to do the same thing over and over. And you continue to add the power to it. And you continue to see something burn. But you knew what it was the whole time. Guys, I must be dense to what I'm saying because in my mind I have it right. What I'm physically doing is completely wrong. I don't know what to say. Guys, this isn't supposed to be for comedy purposes. But you can see, it's absolutely hilarious watching this. A guy that knows exactly what you should do, but he doesn't do it. Okay, I'm going to take one last look at this and I think it's time to buy some equipment to help me out with this. All right, let's see exactly how far we get uh, with what we have. Fifty-five there. Basically, it's kind of. Let's not lie about it right now. I'm doing a very horrible job at this. Things are on fire. That's normal for me. But uh, not exactly right. You know, if you want to build this, do yourself a favor. Do not do what I did. Check everything. Make sure everything's good. Buy the cheap little things at the Amazon to be able to check on an oscilloscope. To be able to put a frequency into it. Just do yourself a favor. I don't care if it's 50 bucks total you spend on both. It is going to save you the biggest headache. 
here I am in my genius move. Not only did I fail, let's just turn off the lights and let's find out if it looked any better. In looking back on the footage, I couldn't really see the light a lot, so I wanted to do it at night just so you can get a good idea of where I'm at so I can get the proper help. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn it on and get this going. Okay, we'll let that charge for a few minutes. So we'll come over here, turn it on, you see the green light comes on. Use one of the bigger bulbs here. Um, that's not. I mean, it's working, but it's not working, working. It's not where I need it to be. I'm at like a third of the power, maybe a quarter of the power, maybe less. This thing should be arcing up like crazy and do other things, but it's doing nothing. In all seriousness, one of the things that I really did learn from all of this is this is one tough circuit. I completely obliterated this thing and still got it to light up. It wasn't in resonance, wasn't correct. As a matter of fact, I was probably... 300 kilohertz off resonance that's a lot but my tesla coil actually made a light light up crazy huh i guess there's a lot more to understand in this this circuit is pretty tough no matter what i put it through no matter how i mistreated it it continued to function so with all that said what's the best way to set this whole thing up on your number one coil five full turns it's only going to give you frequencies in the range of about 275 to 350 kilohertz. Now, 300 kilohertz is right in the center. It's the sweet spot. In every coil you wrap, that's the frequency you want to hit. It's the easiest to hit. Your number one coil will match up to that. When your number two coil resonates at 300 kilohertz, you can find that frequency in your number one coil. What happens if you go out of that range? In this circuit, you're not going to be able to reach that with your number one coil. Best advice, keep your frequency of your number two coil at 300 kilohertz. Second part of the advice, don't be like the old man. If you know it's out of frequency, stop what you're doing, get a coil in frequency, then resume your test. Do not continue to burn things up. The third bit of advice I would give you, if you do not know how to wrap a number two coil, simply order one, but order it at 300 kilohertz. That's it. It's as simple as that. Why go with anything that will make you pull your hair out? Just order it that way. Let me just say this one more time. Sean, you did an amazing job. You're definitely way ahead of me. Sean and I have been busy at this for the last two weeks. We looked at Java for the Tesla coil and we went ahead and determined exactly the length of PVC pipe we need, the diameter, and how much winding goes on it. Now, we put the gauge in there, we got it all figured out. Now we tested them and you saw the last two big coils on there that are four inches in diameter. Both of those came in right around the resonance frequency we were looking for. So the whole java thing is pretty accurate for what we're doing now we're waiting for them to dry right now because they have wet coated uh, lacquer on them 
Hopefully by tomorrow we're testing them. And we have this live show that we're doing on Monday, and I'm hoping to debut them there. Sean and I will get together this weekend, and we'll do a video on it. And we'll look at every single part of this Tesla coil and what we did to come up with it. But I'm telling you this right now, this is a really, really cool project. And like I said, we're doing a live show on Monday, and I can't wait. I'm hoping this whole weekend goes good, man. Today's been a really good day with my Tesla coils. So, anyway, if you like what you saw here today, like, share, subscribe, and comment. Make sure you watch the live show, and have yourself a great day. Thank you.